Hello, welcome back to Cracking the Cryptic. And as you will have seen from Simon's video earlier today, um, the theme of today is uh, saying hi, Ren. Ren is a musician who's released an album, Sick Boy, B-O-I, today. And uh, we wish him very well with it. He's an absolutely fascinating musician. Um, Zegresh, the author of today's puzzle that I'm going to attempt, is a huge fan and got together with some other fans in Skunk Works and they've created a pack which will be linked below the video. So you can look at the pack and the puzzles Simon and I are doing today are from the pack, including the one by Zegresh himself, which is what I'll be doing, which is also called High Ren. Um, now, I will do the rules in a minute in a slightly unusual style. I will quickly mention that if you like Sudoku packs, then the Skunk Works um, Trick or Treat is available on our Patreon, that our apps are basically collect huge Sudoku packs each, 100 puzzles in each, or at least building up to 100 in line Sudoku, which was only released with its first 40 last month. There'll be an extra 10 every month. And um, yeah, those are all available on the links under the video, where you will also find, as I say, links to this um, Ren Sudoku pack and... and possibly also to Ren's video um, of Hi Ren, which Zegresh persuaded Simon and myself to watch. And I think Simon has posted his reaction video. I rather wish I had been filming a reaction video for myself because it is a very surprising and I will say very entertaining video. I can see that it's potentially Marmite. Some people might love it, other people might not like it so much. Um, but you can count me amongst the fans. I was incredibly impressed by the style, the delivery, and especially by the writing, which I thought was stunning. On which note, on which note, Zegresh has actually written a version of the rules for this puzzle in the style of Ren. Um, and I'm going to... Uh, I'm going to attempt to do it justice. Now, if you call up the puzzle, there will be the rules in our normal sort of wording. But Zegresh has written this. Hi there, Ren. It's been a little while. Did you miss me? You're the solver and the setter. Risky. OK, Ren, let's have you then. I got my pen. Normal Sudoku rules apply, my friend, but let's append. Got a number in my head, my chest and arms, they each sum up to that. You're not my friend. Do not pretend. Apart we stand, like there's an unseen line of green between us on the floor. We are more than four apart, for sure. So, friend or foe, one more to know, from this sound hole and odd noise will flow. These are all just standard rules. Your talk obscures. All standard? No. See all these yellow dots that glow? Like us, they're troubled. They are either light or dark. Dark dots mark doubles. The light adjacent digits mark. These dots just sound like a chore, but are there more? Not all are given, but that is all you'll know. Enough. It's time to start. If you're so smart, temper your heart and try to tell them all apart. So, I'm sure I have not done that justice, but that is the poem version of the rules that Zegresh wrote. His comment was, I think that's clear enough. <laughs> I'm not sure it is. I'm going to go through the rules in our own standard style and say, first of all, that normal Sudoku rules apply. One to nine in every row, every column, and every three by three box. Digits along an arrow um sum to the number in its circle now i would just clear about there is only one circle and there are two arrows from it and one goes along this path and one goes along this path there we go um adjacent digits on a green line have a difference of at least five german whispers rule now it then defines um digits oh no first of all the digit in the gray circle is odd and then it defines a black dot and a white dot. And these are the normal crop key rules. A black dot joins digits with a one to two ratio. So one is half the other. And a white dot joins consecutive digits. So they have a difference of one. Now, each dot shown in this puzzle is either black or white or both. And not all dots are necessarily shown. So those are the rules. We have to work out which of the yellow dots are acting as black or white dots. And I will just tip my hat to the depiction of Ren in, I think, in his wheelchair in this puzzle, because it is called High Ren. It is about that song. Um, and 
I think it's fantastic. And these glowing lights in the background. Well done, Zegresh. You know, I don't know how the puzzle's going to play, but I know that the presentation is first rate and I'm very impressed. Okay, enough preamble for once. We will um, restart the clock and let's get cracking. Now, I think we have a couple of points at which we could start, which are not so much the dots. They are more the German whisper line, especially on the guitar, and then the the chest and arms. Um, right, those three digits. Okay, that, that is one set of digits that add up to the number in the circle. And this is the other. There is an overlap. Now, these four, that has to be at least one, two, three. And that has to be another thing. So we're up to a minimum of seven in the circle. Now, it might pay, and I don't know, to add one, two, three, four as a minimum there, one, two there, and one there. And we get to 10, 13, 14, divide by two, and we still get the minimum seven. So that didn't achieve anything. Now, it's not seven, because that pair plus that pair, no, I don't know. It might be seven still. I think it's very unlikely, but... Now, it can't be seven, because one of the digits here must be at least a four in, the, in box five. And once you've got a four and three other digits, two of which have to be the same, seven won't wash anymore. So eight or nine in the circle, which is Ren's head. Um, now, what does that mean? One of these... Oh, well, this is a low digit, surely. You couldn't get this up to six. Yes, okay. So let's get rid of the colouring that I was just doing there, and we'll start with colouring low and high digits on... Okay, so the three things we know about German whispers. One, there's never a five on a green line. Two, the digits, therefore, alternate between higher than five and lower than five digits. That's what I'm going to be doing right away. And finally, that... Fours and sixes can only have, they can't have two neighbours that see each other because those neighbours would necessarily um, have to be the same digit because four and six only have one possible neighbour. Right, now that's interesting. This is blue and that means not all of these are from one, two, three, four. So one of them is at least a five. And whichever one of these cells is a five, and I'm going to say it can't be any higher, it's going with, well, on its arrow, it must have a one, two pair somewhere, in this case, in box five, or in this case, in box six. And then it must have another digit, which is a one, and then we're up to nine for the head. So there we go, we get our first digit. Ren's head is the maximum, a nine. Um, now, one of these is a five, the others, I'm tempted to say they must be one, two, and three, but I don't know that for sure. No, they're not, because this is not a four, because that can't be a nine. Oh, that's getting very interesting now. So, so, so on this body part, we have a five and a four and two lower digits. So the minimum they can add up to now is 12, plus one two here would be 15, plus one here would be 16. That could still, no, it can't be an eight. We, we know that, sorry. That, that didn't help. I was hoping to get to 18 there only, but no, there are other ways of doing it. But five and four must now be in these cells, along with, well, along with two low digits. So this is a one, two, three, four, five, oops, quintuple. And these are from six, seven, eight. I don't think the dots are very helpful yet. We're, we'll get to them, I'm sure. Now this is odd. Could it possibly be three? I think it's gonna have to be one. Could it possibly be three? That would be an eight. This would be two or one. 
And these would now have to include 5, 4, and 3. So they'd have to add up to a minimum of 13. That would be a 3. That's 16. 1 and 2 there is 19. And I'd even forgotten that we have to count this cell twice. We're miles away. That has to be a 1. In fact, we're maybe so far away that now I've remembered that this cell must be counted twice in coming to 18. We might be absolutely minimal. So 5, 4, 2, 1 there is... 12, plus 1 there is 13, plus 1, 2 there is 16, plus a double counted cell here, which is a 2, is 18. That can't be a 1 because we've put a 1 in. So that's a 2, double counted because it's on both arrows. These are 1, 4, 5. This has to be a 3. That therefore has to be an 8. This is 8 or 9 on the whisper rule. This is low. Let's put 2 or 3 there. This is low and sees two neighbours in the same box. So also not a 4 there. This, this, well, I was going to write 8 or 7, but it can't be 7 because it's seeing a 3 in one of those cells. They're a pair. So that's an 8. That's a 9. And that's progress. Now, these can't be 8 anymore. They are 7 or 6. This, I think, is going to have to be a 2-1 pair, but I'm going to have to do... Ah, oh, hang on. 2, 3. These add up to 6. That's a 1-5 pair. A 1-5 pair. That's a 4. And on this version, 2, 4. This has to be 1 and 2. And we know the order. And that fixes the 1 and 5. And that's everything done on the arrows. Most things done... Oh, look, that's got to be an 8. It sees all the high digits. Most things done on the guitar, just this 2-3 pair to resolve. And that's good progress. So 4 is in one of those cells, along with 6 or 7 from there. The other two are 5, and the other one of 6 or 7. That's a triple. These are from 1, 2, 3, 9. These are interesting, actually. Let's have a look at these green cells. One and two there. Now, if those two were green, that's a three, four pair with nine in the middle. If, on the other hand, the central one is green, that's a three with eight there and nine here. So I'm going to put in those candidates and be aware that three and nine must be on this line somewhere. And this, oh, it's almost naked, four or five. These are from four, five, six, and seven. Now, we can't manage to get a black dot relationship there. So that is definitely a white dot, but I don't actually know which. Now, what about these? Well, now we can't get a white dot relationship on this one because six and seven are marooned in the middle. So we must have a black dot relationship, and that is six, and that is three. This is seven, so this is a white dot it's on with, and I don't know, six or eight there, but the three looks down at the blue cells on the guitar. Those can't have a six. These can't have a seven. Are these resolved? Not yet, weirdly. Okay, I can take two and three out of those two. Hmm. This isn't even, because that is, and this has an even number on its white dot. Um... That's not wonderful information. Okay, but again, more progress made. I'm not, I'm not looking at you yet, Mr. Green Line. Three and nine were there, weren't they? So one, two. These cells are all from four, five, six, seven, eight. Oh, it's just possible for this to be a black dot with four, eight. Or is it? If that was four, eight, and that was five. What can you put down here? You've only got three and nine left. No, this is a white dot as well. That doesn't mean this is a white dot, but this is a white dot. And it's not a four five pair because that would break this cell. So there's no four sitting there. Mm, kind of scratching at this now. Clever puzzle though. Um, 
75193348349, don't know. Oh, that can't be a three now. Ah, there we go. That's a nine. So these are a three, four pair. Rather to my surprise, let's get rid of the corner marks. And that's now a five. And now I can take four out of there, five out of all of these. Seven must be on the white dot, which needs an odd digit, so it's not there. That gives me a six, eight pair in the row. Now, normally I could look along this row and say that even digits must be... Oh, I can say, yeah, whether a dot is white or black, it must have at least one even digit, it's quite interestingly, either for the consecutive pair or for a doubling pair. And therefore, each of these does have an even digit, and therefore this is not even, because the even digits in the row will be two there, one there, and one there. This is also not even. And now that that's odd, this is even. I, I mean, I'm considering the fact that there may be much more decisive, many more decisive things I could be doing in the puzzle. Now, if this was high, it would have to be a 7, because 8 and 9 are there. But it can't be a 7, because that would have to be a 1 or a 2. So this is low. Might as well do the colours on there as well. And we can put in high, and this one is not 9. 8, 7 or 6 there. This can't be 3, it now can't be 4, so it's 1 or 2. This is high. I, oh, there's a 4-6 pair looking at that cell. I hadn't seen that. So this high digit can't be a 6. That's all I have to go on there. Not that useful. 3-8-9. I'm, I'm wondering about these dots, but only very vaguely, because they don't have to have odd digits on, because <laughs> a black dot could be two evens. That is three or four, just by virtue of the other digits it sees. Now, I haven't, oh, I have used that six, eight pair to do the parity work in this row. Now, okay, I'm now going to say that these can't be black dots, or although one of them could be a black dot, I don't care. I'm going to treat them both as white dots. What are you talking about, Mark? Well, I'm talking about this, Wren. Um... I'm talking about the fact that there are two possible pairs on a white dot that have an odd number. And I think we've worked out that both of these dominoes need an odd number in. The two possible pairs on a black dot that have an odd number are 3, 6. Not possible here because 3 is gone in the row as well as 6, actually. The other possible black dot pair is 1, 2. And that might as well be a white dot pair. You could choose what colour dot you put on that. So I can treat these as both white dots, both consecutive, and using the even numbers 2 and 4. So one of them must be a 1-2 pair, and the other must be a 4-5 pair, because of 3 sitting here. So then we can fill in 7 in the row and 9. And that 7 is sitting next to a 6 on the dot, and that gives us 8 here. That gives us six here, and that is quite a... Is there a word progressful move? No, there isn't, but that is a move replete with progress, let's say that. Um, so that was good. Now, this, is this a black dot giving a four, or is it a white dot giving... Well, it would have to be nine. Ah, that's really interesting, because this... Cell sees 5 and 6, 7, 8. Doesn't matter that it sees 5, actually. The only white dot candidate is a 9 to connect to 7 or 8. And the only black dot candidate is if that was an 8, this could be a 4. But this is an 8 either way round. So I don't know the colour of the dot, but I do know the left-hand cell of it. Um, this is going well. Right, let's keep going. These are from 1, 2, 3, 4. That's not very interesting. I don't want to consider these because I think I've had a thought about them and it didn't go very far. So do I know which of these is 1, 2 and which is 4, 5? 
If that was four or five, that would be a nine. These would be from one, two, three. Now I don't, I've got this nine looking at that cell. So seven or eight there. Hmm. Okay, let's look at this. This cannot be nine, eight or five. Now that's not very many numbers to have ruled out. But it can't be a one either, because one cannot come in between. The only digit one can connect to on black or white is two, and they can't both be two. So it's two, three, four, six or seven. Hmm, five in the column is either there or here on a white dot. No, I don't think that's getting anything done. I am going to have to consider these other dots down here. Or maybe these ones in a box with nine, four and three gone. Maybe. Okay, let's think about these. If this is... Hmm. That's odd and that's odd. Six has to be on one of these white... Well, no, I don't know they're white. One of these dots. I do know. Right, six has to be on one of them and it can't be with a three. So it's not a black dot. Six is on a white dot in this row. I don't know which side it is, or do I? But I do know that it's with five or seven and forming a triple with that cell. So if it's over here, that's six, five, seven, this would be a one, two, four set. And that's possible. However, if the six was here, it couldn't be with a seven because these couldn't be filled. It would have to be a six, five pair with a seven there, and then you couldn't put four in the row. Yes, I should have noticed. We not only need to put six in this row, but also four. So six is not over here, because then there would be nowhere for four in the row. Six is over here with five or seven, forming a triple with that. These are a one, two, four triple. Now, one is not on this pair because then you couldn't, because four is on it, that's right. So it's a two, four pair. That's a one, which doesn't narrow down the odds here at all. Uh, what does it make this? I mean, almost anything could connect to two or four, but it can't be one, two, four in the box or three, six in the row. So we, well, five, seven, eight, nine. I said almost anything can connect to two or four, but actually seven and nine can't. So this is five or eight, and either way round, this becomes a four. Yep, yep, that's solid. That's, f that's clever. Um, now, that's not a one. Okay, so there is a six. Ooh, what about this dot? Well, the only way it's a black dot is six below three. If it's a white dot, this could be four, five, seven, or eight, which is quite a lot of possibilities and quite annoyingly, most of them are avail available. Oh no, not three, okay. Oh, it can't be a black dot because three there. Sorry, didn't spot that. Oh, I'll tell you what, there's a five, seven, eight triple. That makes this a naked nine. And that makes this a one, two pair. Oh, that could be useful. Three is in one of those cells. Four, nine, three, one, two. It's not that useful, but never mind. This is not an eight. So it's five, six, or seven. In fact, the only place for eight now in the box is there. And that must mean it's a white dot to a seven, and there's six, and there's five. That is useful. Right. I apologize, dots, for saying you were not useful. You were. This is now a six, seven, three triple. And that is an eight. And this is a five, and that's seven five, yes. Okay, intricate, intricate bit of work, excellent. Now, that can't be a five anymore, and that is interesting. 
This can't be a five anymore on any kind of dot with that. I'm wondering, this can't be a one now, can it? I think this has to be a two given the possibilities there. So this is not a two. That's a good candidate to take out. There's no two. Oh, what were we doing? We were having a one, two pair and a four, five pair. We were treating them as de facto white dots, even though that one can clearly be black. Anyway, four, five there. That's a nine. Now we're going again. One, two, three, triple. And that gives me a one, two, three, triple in the column, which makes that a four. And this a nine, six pair. Three and seven can go in there. This is not a three. Five, two, four, one, three. This is six or seven in this row. Six, seven or eight there. I'm going to do some candidate marking here, I'm afraid. Oh, but it's getting good in column three. I can see a pair that I'm about to try and use. A six, seven pair. Yes, that takes six out of that cell and six and seven out of that one. Eight, one, six, seven, nine. This is three, four, or five as well. Now, this can't be a black dot. It has to be a white dot. Has to include a four, and therefore these two don't include a four, and this one has become a five. And this is not a five, so it's now a three, four pair. So I can put in eight, five, and a six, seven pair. I'm sure this can't be seven. No, that's got to be six on a black dot with a three. Oh, lovely. That's so pretty. Now that's not a three, that is. Okay, we can take four out of that cell and one, so it's a three. That finishes row four. This is the only place for four in the box, it seems, assuming my pencil marking is correct. That's become a nine. Got a six, seven, eight triple to resolve, but we can start with three here. Uh, that's a six, that's a seven. And there we go, the first five columns are complete. I think we're finishing off now. Yes, one nine there, one two, and there we go. That's a lovely puzzle, Zigresh. Super tribute. Let's remove the coloring um, in the grid as a whole because we want to see the image of Wren playing his guitar and rapping his bars. Oh, there's a big old message. I don't know if you can, hang on, let me just move the message so you can see that. Yay, congrats. It was never really a battle for me to win. It was an eternal dance. And like a dance, the more rigid I became, the harder it got. The more I cursed my clumsy footsteps, the more I struggled, so I got older and learned to relax, and I learned to soften, and that dance got, and that dance got easier. It is this eternal dance that separates human beings from angels, from demons, from gods, and I must not forget, we must not forget that we are human beings. Wren, from High Wren. So there we go. Thank you so much, Zegresh, and um, thank you for, for bearing with us during this day of supporting Wren's works um, and hoping that sick boy does well i'm sure it will and thank you as always for watching us on the channel um as much as ren has been great for a lot of people's mental health we hope we help a little too occasionally thanks for watching and hope to see you soon in the future bye for now